Hi, and welcome to MZ Webinars. It's really excited to have you with us today. Um, we're going to be talking about how you can assess the effects of the awful economic disruption that's going on at the moment in your area, um, how you can actually um, find out about that. Um, we have Anthony Horn with us today, who is the Sales Director for MZ UK. So really happy to have him. During the course of the webinar, you might have some questions you want to ask. If you could put them in the questions box at the bottom of the control panel. Um, I think what we'll probably do is follow up um, with an email with those, because I don't think we'll have time today to deal with them. But without any further ado, I'd like to hand over to Anthony. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Debbie, thank you. Um, likewise, I'm uh, very excited to be here today to introduce our new consultancy report. Uh, which is going to help you all better understand what's going on at a detailed level in your regional labour market given the the upheaval that's happened over the past few uh, weeks and months. Um, what I'm going to cover off today, uh, I'll give a bit of background uh, as to how effective feedback has helped the design of the new report uh, as a direct follow-on to that past uh, few months of, of upheaval uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about uh, the highlights of the of the report itself but before I get on to those main agenda points just a very very quick introduction to MZ for those of you who aren't already familiar with us we are a global labor market data firm headquartered in the US with operations in a number of countries including here in the UK as well as other countries around the globe and uh, our very focused mission as you can see on screen is to spend our time investing in solid reliable labour market data and then providing that to the outside world so that uh, you can can make more informed decisions to help your college or your or your business and ultimately to help individuals educators and businesses all connect together with skills being increasingly the, the central glue that brings uh, those, uh, those different aspects together. So then let's now remind ourselves quickly about what has been going on in the UK labour market over the past six plus months. Uh, not particularly uh, any good news in the, the, the next few slides I'm afraid. Um, we probably all know this, but unsurprisingly, we've seen a huge slowdown in employer hiring activities in the months since March. And that kind of data, because it's so live and detailed, has been a really strong indicator as to how the rest of the labour market and the rest of the economy um, would be uh, would be performing. So we see employer recruitment was some 66% down on uh, on, 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 on previous norms at its lowest point uh, as we as we uh, went into April uh, and then even at the end of August it was still some 40% down on, on the usual volumes um, and that volume and magnitude of drop in activity has really been unprecedented and, and it again highlights what a huge hit the labour market has taken right across the board all industries all regions, um, all different types of, 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 of jobs, they've all kind of negatively um, been hit by, um, by the, 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 the lockdown and the, the ensuing economic slowdown. I'm also sure that, that, that you all uh, are fully aware of the huge number of workers that have been furloughed right across the UK labour force. Um, and that hit a high point of more than a quarter of all workers across the UK at one point, and indeed more than a third of all workers were furloughed in, in some regions uh, at one point. Uh, and I think the big question when it comes to furlough is actually what happens when the scheme and any follow-on schemes wind down and, and, and come to an end. Again, looking at this past few months that we've all gone through, we've seen a significant rise in the total claim and count data um, and also a rise in the um, job seekers allowance claim and count data, neither of which 
are a measure of total unemployment in the UK, but they are a significant subset of that unemployment. And, and these increases in overall claimant count and job seekers allowance claimant counts um, point towards perhaps what might be coming next, you know, given the fact that these numbers have increased significantly even when uh, a furlough scheme has been in place. So that's the really bad news out of the way. Let's let's get a bit more positive from, from this point onwards. In the midst of, of those kind of huge labour market impacts that we've uh, just kind of highlighted there, I want to turn now to why we've developed our new consultancy report. And a big part of that has been direct feedback from leaders across the sector itself. And, and we all again know that there's loads happening in, in the FA sector right now. There are various initiatives, you know, those that are badged under the Skills for Jobs um, umbrella, various other flexibilities, various funding announcements, um, which I'll come back to. Lots of that flying around. And then that's all kind of set alongside this time of the year. So this time in the calendar when there needs to be some form of business as usual uh, for the FE calendar in the sense that students have been enrolling and kind of expecting to start their course in the autumn term as they always would. So a real challenge uh, for the sector and everyone who works in it and around it. Now, most of the conversations we were having uh, at MZ with, with colleges and college leaders earlier in the year uh, through the, summer, the late spring and summer months were about the, the big challenges around the physical estate. So things like um, the big switch across to online provision uh, and then how to manage social distancing when, when students of all different ages and different courses were going to be allowed to return back into college and back into other buildings. But it's been noticeable, I think, in the last three weeks or so that the conversations I'm having and colleagues at MZ have been having with, with people in the sector have really shifted to include a much higher volume of, of dialogue around regional response and getting provision in line and getting plans in place to help regional response and to help um, put in place uh, courses and other initiatives that, that are going to help uh, local labour markets, people and then employers. So I thought it would be useful just to share uh, some of the, the key themes um, that have been coming out of my conversations over the past few weeks because that really has helped us to refine the content of our of our new consultancy report. So just some anonymised quotes directly from, from those conversations that really kind of um, I think solidify around three very connected themes. Firstly, that many colleges, colleges and providers have uh, existing, uh, well-established, strong relationships with, with organisations like LEPs and, and councils. Uh, and those organisations have sometimes taken the lead in providing their various bits of data and other intelligence about labour market and employer demand. And, and whilst that data has been pretty high level stuff and maybe a little bit out of date actually some colleges have felt that it's done the job it's helped them um, to kind of get a baseline view of what their labor market looks like and it's kind of done done what they needed it to do however of course because of everything that's going on right now well that insight and data isn't really available from those same sources like LEPs and councils, <clears throat> certainly not to the same uh, uh, magnitude and volume that it might have been previously. And perhaps more importantly, it really isn't fit for purpose anymore in the current climate, unless you've got really up to date data about what's going on at a very detailed level, it's not really going to be massively useful. Then the second kind of key theme that absolutely follows on from that is the fact that college leaders know their local labour markets are being hit massively right now. Of course they do. And everyone who works in, in colleges knows that and other providers knows that. But just an example on screen from a, a conversation I had very recently with a principal in London. Business development teams have been in daily dialogue with local employers in that locality about things that the college might be able to help with in the short term. 
So it's not like anyone's suggesting colleges are just sitting around doing nothing, of course not. However, getting a, a much broader view of the complete picture of really what's going on across the labour market uh, for all sectors, all employers, all jobs, all, all uh, uh, workers, it's really quite a difficult thing to do. And things are moving so quickly that um, it's, it's, it's really difficult for, for providers to, to get a handle on that. And then thirdly, the kind of um, the, the 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 third theme that really came through, and, and it very much does link to those previous two points, is that again, many college leaders have stressed to us that they are working really closely with the LEP and the council and, and, and other people to um, get their strategic plans and their sort of regional um, and town and city specific uh, plans in order. However, perhaps more than ever, colleges and other providers are really going to need to be the leader, the absolute driver of the skills response aspect locally uh, over the next uh, few weeks and months. So getting ahead of the curve is actually a phrase I've heard a lot recently from college leaders and others who work in colleges. So getting ahead of the curve to really understand what's needed locally uh, has, has, has been a, a really, really common thing. So a, a positive call, I think, there from the sector um, for more insight into what's going on in, in local and regional labour markets, which is absolutely in tune with something you'll hear Emsi talking about a lot. That's the importance of localised data and localised insights. And on that very theme, you may well have heard the Prime Minister's speech only this morning, uh, where he was talking about plans to expand funding for adults undergoing level three qualifications. And obviously, we, we all await the actual detail uh, about how that's all going to work. But just a couple of things jumped out at me from, from his speech this morning. Firstly, how often skills was mentioned. I think I stopped counting at the 10th use of the word skills uh, in like the first few minutes of his speech. Uh, secondly, the mention of employers was also very frequent. So in the sense of uh, skills that employers find valuable. And then thirdly, um, his use of a few specific job examples. So he talked about um, we don't have enough lab technicians uh, was, was one specific job example. And I think skilled construction workers uh, was another example he used. So it's a very specific, detailed mention of jobs and, and skills and employers certainly jumped out at me uh, from, from uh, what the Prime Minister was, was talking about this morning. So that, I think, points towards why colleges and providers should definitely look to get an absolute grip of what's going on locally, a better understanding of that. Um, you know, what are those relevant jobs and skills that, that employers are seeking in your area? As an example of, of that, we can have a quick look here at some data for the West Midlands region uh, and the manufacturing sector in that region, which employs somewhere in the region of uh, 300,000 people, which is a much higher proportion of the workforce than most other regions. So manufacturing is a really highly concentrated, important thing in the West Midlands. What we see on screen here is a reflection of uh, of how that's taken a big hit this past few months. So we're looking at job postings data uh, and how the volume of that activity has really been hit over the past few months. So on the left hand side here, we see that there were in the region of um, between five and six thousand unique job ads for the manufacturing sector in the West Midlands at the beginning of 2020. And that dropped right away to a low point of around 2,000 unique job ads. Uh, and, and despite a bit of a recovery um, from that low point, actually at the end of August, um, the, the volume was still really, really subdued down at, at just above 2,000. So a huge, uh, huge hit to that sector and a sector that's particularly important to the region. And then on the right hand side of the screen here, you can see that then reflected in. Um, the decline in demand for skills 
right across the board in that sector across the same time period. So the darker uh, bars there show employer demand for specific skills at the beginning of the year. And then the lighter green bars are showing the demand for those sk same skills more recently. So kind of significant declines in, in employee demand for skills across the board. Uh, and we see there actually that, that, that things like management um, has taken the least hit, whereas lots of the more technical skills have actually um, uh, have been kind of hit quite massively, falling by some kind of 50% uh, 50 and more. So in response to all of this then, and, and that kind of need for uh, local intelligence and, and, and a better local understanding, we have developed a brand new consultancy report that's squarely aimed at helping you. Um, as we've heard earlier from, from some of those sample uh, conversations I've uh, had and colleagues have had with sector leaders, um, what we want to do is, is really help you to get a quick, easy to understand picture uh, what's going on in your region to, to help you get ahead of the curve. So that phrase that sector leaders were using repeatedly, get ahead of the curve as you plan through the, the coming weeks and months. And this new report has been designed um, so that we can turn it around very quickly for you. It doesn't require any data from you. Um, so we can uh, we can move quickly and get you this uh, get you this information uh, in, in in pretty short order. What's in the report itself then? Um, well, it has three sections. Firstly, we look at what exactly does your regional labour market look like? What have been the most important jobs and skills um, in in the past few years? And what impact has COVID nineteen actually had on your locality, on your local and regional labour market. Secondly, how exposed um, is your local labour market going forward um, based on how your local industry sectors are, uh, are set? And then thirdly, what about specific jobs in your region which are most at risk? What does the workforce in those jobs look like? And what are the skills that employees in your region are requesting right now? So it's not just the Prime Minister who can talk a lot about skills. Uh, skills are, are fundamentally important to this report and are, and are really a, a central uh, element of it. So let, let me then kind of uh, show you some of the sections of the report analysis itself. Um, so firstly, we're going to be giving you detail on uh, what your regional labour market actually looks like. So what are the jobs in your region from, from both an industry perspective uh, and also from a, an occupational perspective? And um, how does that breakdown of, of, this, of the structural workforce in your region compare to the national average, which is what the red dots on the screen are, are showing? And then, um, which of those, which, jo which jobs have been driving growth in your region over the past five years? Um, what, what types of jobs are really kind of uh, are being required and requested in your area, and how's that, uh, how's that being reflected in job change? And here's that word again: what are the top skills that employers have been demanding uh, in your in your region uh, in recent years? Then from that baseline of, of, of activity in, in, in recent years, so that, that kind of baseline of what your, your regional labour market actually tends to look like, um, we'll then be reporting on how COVID has hit that employer and in industry makeup. So how has COVID hit activity in your region? Again, both from an industry sector and an occupational perspective. And how does that negative or in some cases positive change in recent weeks and months compare to what's happened in industries and occupations national. Then moving on to section two of the report, this is where we're going to be helping you think about the future of your region. So the questions, it's not just about the, the measure of changes in job postings over the past few weeks and months, which is really useful, but, 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 but what comes next? Well, we can look at the exposure of your regional economy to disruptions. 
based on uh, what's happened uh, during uh, the pandemic and lockdown and also how your industry sectors are are connected together um, so this section of the report it's it's going to look at how your region is exposed to changes given its mixture of job roles so how are industries and the jobs within those industries dependent on workers uh, being in close proximity to others which is obviously something that's going to be relevant for some time to come uh, and also how directly uh, jobs are exposed to infection risk uh, and disease risk itself we'll also report on how concentrated jobs are in a particular industry sector so remember that manufacturing example from the west midlands earlier on uh, how concentrated your your jobs are how important jobs in different uh, industry sectors are to your region how does that then map against volumes of workers who have been furloughed and um, so as an example uh, on screen right now industries towards the right hand side of the chart well they have a higher than average number of jobs in this particular region so a higher concentration a higher importance um, is, is uh, coming from from those particular sectors and then towards the top of the chart would be those um, industries where uh, they've seen a higher proportion uh, of workers placed on furlough so how do those two things connect together and I wonder how your uh, your particular region would look and then the third and final section of the report is looking at jobs in more detail so things like which jobs in your region are most at risk based on again how jobs in your region look given the the industry sector mix and, and how those um, industries themselves are exposed to um, disruption uh, but not just looking at which jobs are most at risk but more importantly perhaps the intersection of jobs at risk and jobs that employ lots of people locally uh, just to give that more complete picture of both uh, ultimate risk and exposure of jobs but also looking at volumes of, of individuals who are employed in your region in those jobs themselves we'll report a range of detail on those jobs but just an example of that on screen here so for those jobs that are most at risk and are employing lots of people locally what's the age profile of those workers um, what's their average existing qualification level hopefully pointing you towards how you might be able to best design provision and perhaps even access funding um, to help to help those jobs that are at risk and are, and are potentially going to be seeing increasing volumes of, of unemployment uh, in, in the coming months and then uh, as we as we've kind of heard a few times earlier on um, you know, understanding the skills that are in demand is such a huge priority right now so of course we want to make sure you have access to that information as well uh, you know what are the most important uh, sorry the most in demand skills from employers for different types of jobs in your region uh, right now and, and how is that uh, evolving so that then gives uh, a flavor and, a, and, a, and an indication of the content of, of our new report there's obviously more uh, more detail in the report itself uh, but the, the the key three sections of the report and the key three um, aspects of how we're trying to help and, and and what we're trying to do here is 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 absolutely provide you with that clear useful data uh, about what's going to be going on in your uh, local region at a detailed level which we want you to then use uh, it, to inform your planning over the coming weeks and months because uh, as kind of demonstrated on screen now and, and, and not to labor the point so I think it's a very important one there absolutely will be differences locally regional labor markets always operate differently and, and the last few months have shown us that uh, that has, has held true uh, there will be differences locally going forward and we want you to be on top of that detail to really plan uh, plan uh, what's gonna what's gonna happen next um, because uh, that kind of that kind of regional leadership uh, from you guys as skills leaders is is is, is paramount to to the recovery um, to be frank I do think 
that there's a potential risk that we all kind of fall into a um, well we need to see what actually happens or we need to see more detail about funding and, and other things we might potentially all fall into that trap uh, and, I, and I don't want us to I, I think you know the sector has a huge opportunity to lead local communities through the current crisis and beyond uh, to really help uh, people and employers uh, to uh, and to really drive and own that skills agenda using that word again to really understand what skills are needed uh, regionally uh, is, is 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 a massive opportunity i think for the sector uh, and and you know as we touched on local insight uh, and local understanding is vitally important to that and it's going to be vitally important to to help drive uh, regionally uh, regionally based recovery um, so we absolutely want you to get ahead of the curve and that's what this report is all about and it's all about helping you with so that's the end of our 30-minute uh, uh, presentation today um, by way of follow-up we will be sending you a recording of the session uh, which you can absolutely uh, share with with colleagues and I hope you do that um, I'll be following up as well uh, and, and I look forward to connecting uh, with those of you who want to find out more about the report, uh, how you can get access to it and what's involved. Uh, and I really do look forward to those conversations. Thanks for joining us on today's MZ webinar and I hope to speak to you all soon.